He's one of the world's most powerful men, and he says he has coronavirus handled. Ситуация находится под полным контролем. She's a humble doctor, and she says he's lying. The situation is not under control. In some hospitals, uh, patients are dying without any help. Anastasia Vasilyeva heads a doctor's trade union that's challenging the Kremlin's propaganda. She's trying to bring hospitals the life-saving equipment they lack to fight the virus. The full force of the state has been used to stop her. As Russia reels from infection, we look at the doctor taking on the might of the Kremlin. They can only kill me, but they really have no chance to shut me down. If anyone can endure the privations of lockdown, it's Russians. In the capital Moscow, 13 million people have been stoically staying inside and making the most of it. This song from the band Cream Soda has become the lockdown anthem. Thousands posting videos of their balcony dancing. The band's lead singer, Anna Romanovskaya, is proud to have played a part in helping people get through. It's become something like a cult <laughs> for people now. Everybody needs to do this challenge, to, to take part in it. <laughs> yes, and people are very open and they show their artistic beginning. <laughs> but like all Russians, she feels the real stars of this crisis aren't the people staying at home, they're the health workers going out to treat COVID's casualties. I really feel pity for doctors and for medical workers because I can't believe they're doing this. I want to thank them for all these things because they are just putting their lives to save other lives. Not since World War II have so many people across Russia risked so much to do their duty. Health workers are dealing with more than 400,000 infections. Only the US and Brazil have more. Putin has long insisted he has their backs, even donning a hazmat suit to inspect a Moscow COVID facility. But that's not what this doctor is saying. Anastasia Vasilyeva is a 36-year-old ophthalmologist. She doesn't treat COVID patients, but she's made it her mission to get help to the medical workers who do. Если вы думаете, что я сейчас нахожусь в зоне боевых действий в Сирии или Сомали, то вы ошибаетесь. Я в больнице номер шесть, в самом центре Москвы. Шесть лет назад ее закрыли как невыгодную. Медиков сократили, пациентов отправили в другие учреждения. Her union, the Alliance of Doctors, runs a website exposing the dire state of Russia's public health system. Мы поедем по всей России, чтобы инспектировать медицинские учреждения и привозить средства защиты медикам туда, где государство не может обеспечить их такой защитой. It is a direct challenge to President Putin. Весь мир сейчас на карантине. Вы видели, в какой защите Путин приходил в инфекционную больницу? И правильно, государство заботится о том, чтобы президент не заболел. 
Но почему государство не хочет заботиться о том, чтобы не заболел врач? Вот эту маску и этот защитный костюм я купила сама. И уверяю, у 99% медиков России нет этой защиты и нет денег, чтобы купить ее самостоятельно. Dr. Vasilyeva may seem an unlikely nemesis to the Kremlin's strongman. She lives in a quiet middle-class neighborhood of Moscow. Так, я поднимаюсь пешком всегда, поэтому на четвертый этаж вы можете на лифте. Her small apartment is the lockdown headquarters of the Alliance of Doctors. Anastasia, good yes. evening. Как Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for talking to us. I've been following her campaign on Skype and through Moscow Cruise we've hired to film her. I want to find out why such a powerful state is so desperate for a doctor's good deeds to be punished. And that's why government doesn't want us to show these problems. And of course they do everything now. To stop, stop, to stop us, to interfere our, our actions. For Putin, this is not just about a virus. It's about his own political survival. For weeks, as the disease spread around the world, the Kremlin insisted Russia was safe. At this March 4 meeting, the Deputy Prime Minister Tatyana Gulikova described reports of an epidemic as fake news. Хочу еще раз доложить вам, что это не соответствует действительности. Ладно, хорошо. Значит, что касается вбросов этих провокационных, ФСБ докладывает, что в основном они организованы из-за границы. State media amplified the message. The government's coronavirus spokesman, Dr. Alexander Miaznikov, repeatedly downplaying it. Я не знаю, зачем и кому это нужно сегодняшняя вот эта истерия, потому что на самом деле этот коронавирус он не очень контагиозный, то есть не очень заразный. Ну куда меньше заразен, как, допустим, та же корь. А у него не очень высокая смертность. Maxim Trudolyubov is editor-at-large of the independent Russian business daily Vedomosti. He's weathering the lockdown in neighboring Lithuania. State-run television in Russia is a tool of political power, so it has just been doing what it was told to do. They were calling it a Chinese virus, just like President Trump. They were saying that uh, those were probably some biological weapons that escaped from a lab or something. So uh, they've been really silly, uh, and that was clearly a Kremlin policy in the beginning. They wanted to downplay uh, uh, the, the crisis because uh, Putin obviously had his politics on his mind. And The deadly infection intruded into Putin's plan to be president for life. He's currently serving the last term allowed under the Constitution. On March 10, he called a referendum that would allow him to rule until 2036. Putin wanted a hundred million Russians to come out in the middle of a pandemic to queue to vote for him. This whole year, 2020, was supposed to be about bolstering his political role in Russia. And then suddenly there's something that steals the show completely from him. On March 25, as the virus took hold in Russia, Putin reluctantly delayed the referendum and retreated to his estate outside Moscow. It was left to the city mayor to organize the lockdown, ordering residents to stay indoors except for essential work, shopping, or dog walking.
Anastasia Vasilyeva has not stayed locked down. <laughs> it's Monday morning outside her apartment block and she and her colleagues are getting ready to do a run. Doctors from three hospitals have contacted them asking for protective equipment. They have to move fast and stealthily. While the medical staff are desperate for what they can bring, she says hospital administrations have been told not to accept it. Сейчас оденем костюмчик. Эти костюмы многоразовые, так что они чистенькие, постиранные. On April 2, they set out with more than 500 masks, along with hazmat suits, gloves and protective glasses, to a hospital in the Novgorod region, 400 kilometres from Moscow. Halfway there, they were stopped by police. We just wanted to help. We just wanted to, to uh, bring this PVE to the hospitals, uh, to the hospitals and to the medical workers. But I think that these policemen, they had an order from the officials. Police told them they were being taken in for questioning. To protect themselves, they had brought along a lawyer and their cameras. Если я не вижу на вас сейчас нагрудного знака сотрудника полиции. Что вы здесь будете добры, пожалуйста, не проследовать для ведущей объяснения. А куда проследовать, я не задерживаю. Обращаемся к президенту России Владимиру Владимировичу Путину. Вот у вас, Владимир Владимирович, прекрасный импортный защитный костюм, а у медиков средств защиты индивидуальной вообще нет. Вот мы собрали деньги со всей страны, вся Россия. As they waited in town for questioning, the hospital's doctors managed to find them to collect the equipment. Спасибо им большое за оказанную помощь, так как в больнице ничего не хватает. Да нигде ничего не хватает. Масок вот не купить в аптеках нет. Так что мы очень вам благодарны. As night fell, police pounced on Dr. Vasilyeva, dragging her away from her colleagues. She was released after she passed out in the melee. But a short time later, even more officers grabbed her, taking her by force to a police lockup. She was kept in a cell overnight in seeming contravention of Russian law. Не имеете права для дети до 14 лет. Вы же их оставили там один. 
Вы меня здесь держите уже 10 часов. То есть вы обладая информацией, вы обладая информацией о том, что у нее дети, хотите ее сейчас арестовать? Но никакой информации нам об этом не предоставляет. Нет, она сейчас вам об этом говорит. Вы обязаны это проверить по информационным регистрам МВД. Вы обязаны это проверить. Вы не можете э, задержать на срок более трех часов женщину, имеющую детей до 14 лет. Без защитника она не пойдет никуда. Больше трех часов она не, не имеет быть права задержанной. Back in Moscow, the attacks continued. Vladimir Solovyov is a prominent state TV host and YouTube shock jock. Tonight's target, Dr. Vasilyeva and her alliance of doctors. О чем вы вообще, психи? Какой вы альянс врачей? Вы альянс жуликов, проходимцев, негодяев и мерзавцев? Дайте нам, скажите! Вы же все время лжете, вы же набор лжецов. А почему ты на машине без документов едешь? А почему ты вообще нарушаешь режим и вообще выезжаешь за пределы Москвы? Откуда знать, ты поехала в больницу, где ты читаешь люди, а ты что решила, что ты не заразная? Ты вообще хоть что-то в вирусологии понимаешь? Ты свой диплом откуда получила? Кто тебе его выдал? Кто тебя учил? Ты офтальмолог! И себя вирусолог, как из говна пуля. Ой, простите, нехорошее слово. Из дерьма. For months now, health workers have tried to air their grievances on social media. In Dagestan, sick nurses were housed in a laundry room while they waited to be tested for the virus. At this hospital in St. Petersburg, patients spilled out into the corridors. We don't want to work in the hospital. Мы э, любим наших пациентов, мы хотим, чтобы было выздоровление у всех. Но работать э, в таких э, незащищенных условиях, к сожалению, не представляется возможным. The Alliance for Doctors has featured their pleas on its website. Друзья, меня зовут Татьяна, я э, анестезиолог-реаниматолог. Нет противочумных костюмов, у нас нет респираторов N95 или ФФП, у нас нет э, специальных э, экранов, у нас нет очков, кожного антисептика у нас нет. Защитные костюмы. But most Russians have only seen state media reports, where hospital managers denounce the alliance's videos as lies. Респираторы. Очевидно, что выглядит все совсем не так, как в обращении Татьяны Ревы. Каждый ролик набирает около 20-30 тысяч просмотров. Не так много, но круги расходятся по воде, заставляя практикующих врачей отвлекаться от своих профессиональных обязанностей и гулять по больницам, включив камеру телефона, чтобы опровергнуть очередной фейк. It's the company she keeps. Alexei Navalny is the closest thing Russia has to a genuine opposition leader, leading mass rallies against Putin in between stints in prison. Года три назад я вообще, честно, я совершенно не интересовалась политикой. Я действительно думала, что Путин прекрасный президент, честное слово. Я не знала, кто такой Навальный. Когда он ко мне пришел лечиться в семнадцатом году, я, честное слово, не знала, кто он такой вообще. In 2017, Navalny suffered an eye injury when green dye was thrown in his face. У меня есть сильное зеленое лицо, которое отлично подходит под фирменные цвета нашего штаба. He saw treatment from the ophthalmology clinic where Dr. Vasilyeva and her mother worked. Алексея мы успешно вылечили, все хорошо. И через год у нас начались массовые увольнения в институте глазных болезней. И причем, ну там, пытались уволить мою маму, вернее, уволили даже, и многих сотрудников. Navalny gave her free lawyers to fight the cutbacks and advised her on how to form a union. Он был оформлен, и мы, собственно, начали работать так активно где-то с ноября месяца. То есть моя задача была всегда помочь медицинским работникам. 
Until the lockdown, she worked out of Navalny's office. The Alliance of Doctors is now run from this laptop on her kitchen table. She liaises with colleagues across Russia, edits the website and raises funds for personal protective equipment. All this while looking after her 14-year-old daughter Katya, who is homeschooling during the lockdown. Not only is her mother treated as an enemy of the state, her father, who is also a doctor, is battling to treat COVID patients. My um, ex-husband, he is now is working in, in the uh, Corona Hospital, and he said that it's very difficult to work with the lack of PPE. They have no chance to eat, to drink. The longer we spent with Dr. Vasilyeva, the clearer it was that the constant harassment was taking a toll. Um, now I'm, I'm really very tired uh, with know. this... Uh, um, uh, with the crying of medical workers and uh, just try to, and trying to uh, resolve the problems. but Dr. Vasilia, it can be very dangerous to challenge the Kremlin. A lot of journalists have been killed. You've been very brave. Um, but do you worry about your own safety? Um, I really do not afraid of uh, anybody, of anything, because uh, so what, what they really can do for me. I only, I'm only telling the truth. And uh, just all my uh, sentences, all my words, I can prove really with the facts. And uh, that's why I, I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm not frightened by, uh, by, the, by the actions of government, by their words. Today, she and her colleagues are outside a hospital again trying to deliver equipment. They first have to work out if the hospital administration will accept it. They wait nervously, dressed in protective gear in case they get the all clear, joking to break the tension. <laughs> this time, to their relief, they don't have to deliver in secret. It seems a turning point for their operation. Ну просто абсурдно спускать собак и говорить, что нам ничего не нужно, у нас все есть, когда все люди уже понимают, что вот, вот он дефицит, и медики могут заболеть, и поликлиника закрыться на карантин, и в итоге люди перестанут получать помощь. Но конспирация сплошная. At this hospital, they're not allowed to enter. Doctors have to meet them outside and load the supplies into their cars. Ладно, в общем, надеемся, что медикам будет проще и легче работать и безопаснее с этими средствами защиты, которые мы передали. Им передавайте привет большой. 
They leave quickly when they spot an unidentified man filming them. Since the early days of downplaying the danger, state television has switched course, showing Putin as a man of action leading the fight from his ISO bunker. The Kremlin has now acknowledged the virus's exponential spread, with as many as 10,000 new cases a day, among them the Prime Minister. But it's reporting a remarkably low death rate of around 1%, which officials put down to superior health care. Относительно того, что уровень летальности в Российской Федерации в 7,6 раза ниже, чем в мире в целом, он таков. И мы никогда не манипулировали официальной статистикой. I don't believe I know that I know that it's, it's a very, a very terrible lie. It's the same virus. But in Russia, maybe we have, we have, we have some magic uh, medicine. The lockdown is finally easing. Putin has ordered regional governors to start getting life back to normal. Dr. Vasilyeva believes Moscow's infection has peaked, but she fears worse is to come. In a lot of regions of Russia, the self-isolation is finished. But in some regions, the, it's only the beginning of the infection. So what we can get now? Uh, in the regions, there will be a terrible situation with a lot of patients uh, with the coronavirus. Putin is already planning his next celebrations of political glory. In May, he had to postpone celebrations at the end of World War II. Instead of holding a military parade in Red Square, he could only lay a solitary wreath. But he's now ordered mass parades across Russia at the end of June. Мы сделаем это 24 июня, в день, когда в 1945 году состоялся легендарный исторический парад победителей. And he's declared there will be a public vote to extend his rule on July 1. Meanwhile, the death toll of doctors keeps rising. In Russia's second city, St. Petersburg, friends and relatives place photos of health workers who have died from coronavirus. This unofficial memorial is opposite the city's health department, so bureaucrats have to see the daily casualties. Very big quantity of medical workers are died now, it's about 200. It's not official statistics, the medical workers themselves are writing this, uh, this list. For Anastasia Vasilyeva, there is just one way to honour them, and it's worth any price. We are helping medical workers, and I know that we are supporting them, and they are supporting me. I want very much to help our people, to help medical workers. Really, I just, it's my wish, it's my, um, uh, it's my dream to help them. And um, I'm ready for everything. Спасибо большое.